This is my great grandmother, Annie McCary. She was born of February 21st, 1920. She lived through the Great Depression, 1929 to 1941. So that would have made her nine years old when the Great Depression started. My name is Annie Sue Morrell Hendricks McCary. I got five names. <laughs> and my parents was Walter and Stella Hicks Hendricks. I was the fourth of the fourth child, four boys and one girl. The first three and me have all made it to ninety and more. But my younger brother had polio when he was little and he died at seventy seven in two thousand. Hi, my name is John Colton McCary and I am related to her because how? Because um my dad's father is her mother. You're my great grandchild. Mm -hmm. Where where did you live when the Great Depression started? Uh, really, I, I think it started before 29 for us. When Daddy moved the family to South Georgia with the begging of brothers and the cousin, they was already down there. And the uh, bow weevils ate up the cotton and everything went bad that year. And so the, they were ready to come back. So it went down there about 10 months. So we got back without any money, without anything. Daddy had left the mules and um, farming equipment to what he had for the man to sell the, on the land. And we never, he never did get anything out of that. So we, we ended up on a distant cousin's farm, just a short ways over here on the road. And he, Helped, well, he kept us up for at least the first year because we was barefooted and five of us, five little ones, and mom and daddy, seven to feed. And But mom and daddy were good managers. They didn't waste food or money or anything. So we, uh, of course, as we had just sharecroppers, hi. And Daddy worked at sawmill part time, and then of course when he come crop, crop time, he planted cotton and corn, and uh, we had a garden, and kind of got started a little, but we still didn't have any money. And uh, but we we had it wasn't maybe what we wanted, but it was something to fill up on, and. I, after about, I guess that was 27, I guess, or eight long in there. But then we moved on up the road to a bigger farm and Daddy managed to buy a couple of mules. And you bought mules in like you buy cars now, just on time. And so we, the boys, the older boys, got grown up some, and they, uh, they were more help in the field. So Daddy planted, he added on more, more crop. And I'm running into your next question, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. How big was your family? Uh, there's seven of us, five children, all of us under 10. But uh, we, we had to work, yeah, we went to the field when we got big enough to carry a hoe or, ho or hold up a plow. Being nine at the time, what changes did you notice? Well, I, I don't really know at that time. I wasn't thinking about what I was just playing, but <laughs> you didn't do much of that. But when I first started to school, 
um, we lived over here, and I guess it was at least two miles to school. The boys all walked up to the old Johnson School house, just a two-room house, and I went to Gore because I wasn't big enough to walk that far the first part of the year. I had to pay bus fare, which was, I don't remember, 25 cents a month or 50 cents or something, it wasn't much. But at Christmas that year, my first year of school, we moved on up the road further, so then I had to walk to school. And as I got older, of course, more work and more money was required. What type of crops or farming did your family do, and how did it affect your family living? Well, Daddy planted corn cotton, sorghum cane, everything to popcorn, peanuts, uh, all kinds of vegetables. And it, being able to, to save more, we, we eat at home. About all you got at the grocery store was coffee and sugar. Uh, not a whole lot more. Didn't go to the grocery store every day or every week. But we, anyway, we started gaining a little ground along in the, well, I'd say, I guess, mid-30s. The two older boys graduated at the same time. The oldest one was 22. Of course, back then, you didn't start school till you were six. You had to be six by the first of September. And you just had 11 grades. That he'd lost out because having to stay home and plow and whatever. What did you have to do for food and work clothes? Work harder. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't really know how to answer that. Uh, uh, well, as, as the boys got older and, and more, they could pick up odd jobs. They helped out more, and that, that eased the family with some of the burden. Um, one of my brothers worked at um, the Gores Cannery. Him and a friend were on the cannery for, I don't know, a few years. and. That brought in more food, and of course that cannery, you could take your vegetables and stuff down there and can it. And of course you had to pay a small fee, and then Diddy and his brothers and my brothers, um, they had a syrup mill, and they, they got a dollar a gallon for syrup, and now you pay five dollars, I guess, for a pint. But, it was, it was hard work, but we began after everybody got older and with more help, things began to improve. What was the sign that the Great Depression on was coming to an end? Well, back in the 30s, I guess it was. The government started a program of WPA, which I, a lot of people poke fun at it. It meant we fiddle around. So, of course, that wasn't the real, the real job. And then they started a CCC camp, and uh, it, they, of course, as people got more able to buy clothes and the. Uh, was more um, money to buy clothes and that brought in more industry for the county. I went to work in, at the hoser mill in 1942 and stayed there 26 years. It, it wasn't a 
one of the best paying jobs, but it was home atmosphere. It was a good place to work. So that's how I got on my feet some, and by me do, taking care of myself, I was able to help mom and daddy out. It's been a, a rough road back when we were growing up. You didn't, everybody didn't have a good mattress and salmons and all that. We had wheat beds made out of wheat straw. And in the spring when they cut wheat and thrash it, you get a new, you get, that's when you get a new mattress. Um, when, I don't know, I can't think of it right now, but there's so many things like that. And way at one time when they first started uh, with the WPA and all that, they had a program, the government had a program that you could make your own mattresses, so, but you you had to help do it. They had people in, I think it was down at the old Salma Cotton Mill where they had their making added of making mattresses. Mom and Daddy went two days and made two mattresses with help. And they were just cotton mattresses. They used up some of the cotton that people had raised it with the, I guess it was seconds in the cotton that they used. In fact, one of them's upstairs on the bed that hadn't been used and slept on in 30 years, I don't guess. It's just there. And when you, we had, we had chickens at home, eggs at home, hogs with meat, lard, and then we grew all kinds of vegetables. And, Peanuts and on a rainy day it was that day you picked off peanuts. Daddy dig them and leave them on a, put them on a hay frame out in the field and let them dry and then haul them to the house. And come a rainy day you'd spend the day picking off peanuts. Then we'd get in from school. We mom would bake sweet potatoes and hearts peanuts. We change clothes in a hurry and get us a potato and. Fill her pockets full of peanuts and go to the cotton patch. Pick <laughs> cotton till dark. And that's really, if if it had more of that now, it wouldn't be near so many shootings and killings and carrying on. <laughs>